Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Carson Valley United Methodist Church. My name is La Tupaya. I'm your preacher. Yes, and I'm also the pastor, believe it or not, for this great congregation. Uh, we have a great service planned for you today. Hopefully you find comfort and rest on today's Sabbath during today's service. We have blue cards that are available that are probably handed to you uh, with your bulletin. Please fill them out and drop them in the baskets located at our exit doors. If you look around your pew, we have prayer and praise cards available. If you have a prayer request or praise to share with the congregation, uh, please fill them out and hand them to me during the birthday bank hour. Today is the 21st Sunday after Pentecost. And today is a Sunday we call Consecration Sunday. In celebration of Consecration Sunday, I would like to ask Steve Hamilton um, and give him the platform for this part of the program. Good morning and happy Consecration Sunday to all of you. <laughs> this is the day that we celebrate all the gifts that we have received and those that are still to come. If you look on the front page of, of the bulletin, you'll see this wonderful poem about food. The last two lines read as follows. Homes are made by fools like me, but only God can make the tree. Well, you see up here on the wall, this is our tree. These estimates of giving in the form of the tree uh, 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 represent all those gifts from this congregation that will keep our church in the green in 2024. And for that, we celebrate. So if you have, uh, if you have any questions, questions, and I also have your estimates of giving available if you're so inclined. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Steve. Uh, at this time, uh, before we uh, sing our song of gathering, please greet your neighbor and let him know uh, thank you for coming today, even though it's cold. <laughs> Hello again. <laughs> <laughs> As we center ourselves and harness our excitement through our times for worship, I would like to ask the church congregation to please stand if you are able. As we sing our song of gathering, Faith while trees are still in bloom. Shall we pray? Mighty Lord, we stand before you, 
truly blessed to be celebrating our support of you, your son, and our church. Today, we consecrate our pledges and our estimates of giving so that we can continue to enjoy hearing your words and experiencing the fellowship and love of our church family in this beautiful place. Your house, your house and our family, filled with song and prayer and love and fellowship, will endure. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Uh, for our children's message, we have Nancy and her puppet friend. Hi, hi, hi. How you doing? <laughs> What's the matter, Marvin? Uh, this backpack's heavy. Well, what, what have you got there? Well, I just, oh, help. Okay, you, you can look in there. Okay. Oh, it's a, a jar of money. Yep, it's all my monies. Well, why did you bring it to church? Oh, I always carry it with me. Why? It's my life savings. Uh, so what, you want to keep it safe or something? Well, yeah, you know, you never mo know what might happen. I mean, like it might get lost or stolen? Well, no. Like, I mean, I might get called to heaven. What? What? what I, you've lost me now. Well, you know, you, you got to have enough money to get into heaven. <sighs> Where did you get that idea? Well, I mean, think about it. What's the greatest place on earth? Oh, that's easy. Disneyland. <laughs> and when you go to Disneyland, if you want to get in, you have to pay an entrance fee. Right. And so... Since heaven is so much greater than Disneyland, um, I, I guess the, you know, the entrance fee would be tons higher, so you know, I gotta, gotta keep saving all my money, so I'm, I'm ready when, when I go to heaven. Wow, Marvin. <laughs> Sometimes I'm at a loss for words with you. Um, money has nothing to do with getting into heaven. It doesn't? No, you just, you need to accept God's grace, and you need to have faith in Jesus, but you don't need money. But, but then why do we have offering baskets? I mean, I, I just always figured that that was, you know, so people could kind of pay off the entrance fee a little at a time. <laughs> I mean, you know, like an installment plan. No, no, money has nothing to do with hev heaven. It, it is important on earth. We use our offerings to help people who are hungry or homeless. Um, we, we use that money to serve others and, and to help them to know Jesus. We use the money to pay the bills to keep the church open so that we can help people here on earth. Oh, so I guess God doesn't want me to just keep my money to myself. Exactly. Let's pray. Loving God, you have blessed us so much. Help us to use our money and our talents to bless others. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks, Marvin. You're welcome. My mom always told me not to stand in front of the choir, so <laughs> be nice today. <laughs> so every week we are very fortunate uh, to donate to our birthday bank. The birthday bank helps children around the world with all the proceeds given to it. Uh, it's a way that we highlight and celebrate here as a church congregation and as we witness the blessings of God coming, uh, coming forward and putting into this uh, nice little hut in my hand birthday or anniversary, uh, coming forward, celebrating with God, and uh, also giving him acknowledgement that the benefits that we have in our life, we also want to share it with those that do not have it uh, or are unfortunate. So if you have a highlight in your life, a birthday that's, uh, okay, so everyone that's come with a birthday 
I haven't heard anyone since I've gotten here to Carson Valley at 30s or 40s. So, um, and so I hope to make it up to my 80s. Uh, so um, if you have a highlight or a celebration that you want to bring to their birthday bank, um, please come forward. Oh, and this is the best time to bring your prayer and praise cards. You see what I mean? You see? You see? So, okay. Today is my birthday. Happy birthday, Wendell. Thank you. 90 what? 91. Today is somebody else's 65th birthday. Mm, happy birthday, Steve. Oh. If you haven't noticed, Len is not here today. He's still functioning yes. correctly. Yes! <laughs> Just kidding, Len. <laughs> Celebrating the second birthday of our grandson, Orion Maximus Bessel. Oh, this is, again, in celebration of uh, Wendy's uh, birthday. It's from his niece, and uh, they're visiting a couple of retired Methodist ministers, my goodness. Mm. Yes, I gotta be on my best behavior, so. Alrighty, no one behind me, okay. I'd like to have your permission, church, to say prayer for the birthday bank. Please say aye. aye. All right, let us pray. Jehovah Jireh, you are the Lord that provides. You given us a place to rest our heads, uh, food in our bellies, uh, food, uh, people to, to love in our, in our families, and also a church that embraces us for who we are. And we are very grateful that you have given us your only begotten son to die on a cross for our sins. And so, Lord, we pray forward so that children around the world can experience the love that you have given us. And so we ask you to bless this birthday bank as it reminds us to give every week or every time that you have given us a blessing. And we ask you all this in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. So we are going into tithes and offerings. And let me get out of the way for everyone here. Um, and so uh, we do not uh, pass a basket around for those that are um, new here, but we do offer a portion of our talents. And so. For our offertory for today, we have the bell choir that will be performing a uh, song called It Is Well.
amazing to be able to listen to them, but particularly to watch them perform in this because it's like it's well choreographed. It's beautiful. Uh, Nancy's running five bells and five <laughs> chimes, and she didn't drop any of them. <laughs> Very good. Thank you, ladies. Mighty Lord, today is when we consecrate our tithes and offerings. We pledge a portion of the great bounty which you have granted us, and we will continue to do so. We are Christians, and we are committed to helping others, as your Son taught us. Please accept them and use them as you deem necessary. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We are going into the portion of the program or the bulletin program uh, called Prayer and Praises. And I will read the prayers first, and I ask the church congregation to please respond with, Lord, hear our prayer. And second, I will read the praises, and I ask the church congregation to respond with, we thank you, Lord. And I ask uh, Gwen, please, uh, if you would play a quick snippet to quiet our hearts and minds. Our first prayer is from Lynn. Prayers for my son for operation for cancer. Uh, prayers uh, uh, from uh, for the McDowells. Uh, Bob McDowell, his treatment is going well uh, at Prestige Carson Tahoe Rehabilitation Center. And um, even though everything is going well, I've been in contact with Linda uh, and uh, she asked to continue on with the prayers. They are really helping uh, this time of process and treatment, and also with her, and also helping her as she's coping with day-to-day uh, -day transportation. So, prayers for the McDowells. Uh, prayers from Mike Jessa. Prayers for the people of Israel and Gaza. Uh, a prayer request for Israel and Palestine, and the children. Uh, uh, and the people there that are during this time of war. And yes, we, this is uh, nothing to be ignored. We know what's going on in uh, overseas, and so our prayers are with this conflict, and, um, and we, we hope that, that there's better agreements in the future. And so uh, these are our prayers. Uh, so we have a couple praises. Uh, the praise from Rebecca Holt. Uh, there, uh, there is peace in my household after a uh, very large amount of strife for several months. Uh, an answer to my prayer. Uh, this is a praise uh, from myself. A praise for uh, James Pedelin and Sherry Miller for being uh, becoming a new members of Carson Valley United Methodist Church. Uh, Jim, where are you? There it is, Jim, right here, our new member right here. Last week I brought them in, him and Sherry Miller. So Sherry's in the first uh, in the first worship service, and then we have uh, Jim in the choir, and we are very thankful you are here. And so um, uh, they just keep on coming. I do not stop memorizing. I'm not. I am not playing with that. So, these are our praises. We thank you, Lord. Uh, if I, will, I would like to ask the church congregation to please stand if you are able as we sing 
the Lord's Prayer. Please be seated. We have an anthem for you, my church family. It is titled, All Will Be Green, performed by the Chantel Choir, directed by Tammy Owens.
You stand as you're able. Our scripture reading today comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 22, verses 15 through 22. Then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap him in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. And he said to them, Whose head is this and whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. The word of God for the people of God. Please be seated. I'd like to give acknowledgement to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, three persons in fellowship, blessed Trinity. I'd like to acknowledge this sanctuary, the place we come to fellowship as one to worship God through his only Son, Jesus Christ. I'd like to acknowledge church staff, church volunteers, church members, also, our friends that join us via YouTube, thank you for joining us today. I'd like to acknowledge youth members or children, the present and future of Carson Valley United Methodist Church. Uh, visitors and friends, welcome to Carson Valley United Methodist Church. If you are cold, it is okay to bring a blanket here and bring popcorn and hot cocoa. Enjoy yourself. Welcome home. It is my privilege and honor, church family, to preach the word of God of Jesus Christ in your presence today. My sermon scripture today is from today's passage that was read to you by Al. The gospel of Jesus Christ written by the apostle Matthew, chapter 22, verse 15 to 22. And this is my sermon scripture. The focus of my sermon scripture will be on Matthew, chapter 22, verses 21. And this is how it's read. They answered the emperors. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are of the emperor, and to God the things that are God's. My theme for today, the things that are God's. The things that are God's. As Americans, one of the unique things in our economy is our requirement to pay taxes. And whether you have been a law-abiding citizen or been in trouble with the IRS, <laughs> taxes must be deducted from our paychecks or paid quarterly. Or in whatever payment you pay your taxes, these endeavors have to be fulfilled. Taxes remind us as citizens that we support the welfare, the security, and also the objective or planned objectives of this country. I know as a uh, tax-paying citizen, one of the most disappointing things that I have witnessed when I was working for for-profit companies was the big deductions on your check if you are status as a single man. <laughs> but I will tell you today, Carson Valley, that the most exciting day in my life, besides my wife's birthday, and besides my wedding anniversary, and besides the birth of Tony, is tax return day. 
Oh, church, oh, church, the, 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 the beauty of tax returns when it shows up in your direct deposit and you're just wondering and plotting what are you going to do to divide that income. The taxes remind us that the payments that are given to, go, to good old Uncle Sam are duties that we have here in the United States of America. In our gospel reading today, we have a situation in Matthew chapter 22, verses 15 to 22, in which Jesus is approached by the Pharisees and the Herodians, who were a uh, different Jewish sect, plotting to entrap him, saying in a smooth lip, or trying to uh, smooth talk him in verse 16, saying this. Now, now listen to this. Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with the truth and show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality. And then it goes on to verse 17 asking, tell us, then what you think, is it lawful to pay taxes to their emperor or not? In verse 18, Jesus is aware of their malice, meaning their intention. Jesus asks them, why are you putting me to the test? You hypocrites. In verse 19, Jesus says, show me the coin used for the tax. And it goes on, Jesus asked them, whose head is this and whose title? Verse 21, <clears throat> the, they answer, the emperors. Jesus responds, give therefore to the emperor the things that are of the emperors and to God the things that are God's. This is our key verse, church family. I would like to divide my sermon into two parts. Number one, the things of the emperor. And this is symbolic. Um, emperor would be translated into uh, government or land of the law. Number two is the things that are God. The things of the emperor. In the book of Matthew, we are experiencing the attempt to entrap Jesus. In his words, to blaspheme the Roman emperor of Rome. Moreover, it was another a plan from the Pharisees to kill Jesus by persuading him to say words of obstruction towards the Roman emperor. Our location in today's gospel is in Jerusalem, which is referred to in the previous chapter of Matthew chapter 21, marking uh, Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem, which is uh, the greatest outcome of the dialogue in which Jesus and the Pharisees uh, come into contact. Now, the Pharisees, they did not want to uh, approach him in a different way. They wanted him to suffer the biggest consequences. Uh, and so the greatest outcome of the dialogue of Jesus and the Pharisees is that he did not protest about the economic tax system of this time or challenge the emperor's requirement of Roman provinces such as Jerusalem to pay taxes. Jesus understood his context, that it was in a melting pot of different cultures, but under the authority of a dominant empire. We can confirm in Paul's epistle writing to Romans chapter 13, saying, obey the government, for God is the one who has put, put it there. There is no government anywhere that God has not placed in power. So those who refuse to obey the laws of the land are refusing to obey God and punishment will follow. I'd like to ask you to look at your neighbor, please, my church family. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. oh neighbor, neighbor. Obey, the law. obey the law. <laughs> Jesus knew the context and time that he was in. The fact that the Pharisees and the Herodians tried to entrap him into being charged for treason was one of the most hypocritical deeds they pursued. Jesus used the word hypocrite because they saw something in the Pharisee's soul that was impure. Furthermore, Jesus saw, that, saw them as lawmakers in the Jewish community. But their obedience was to the emperor. In Mark chapter 12, the same story is told of Jesus. But the emperor is revealed as Caesar which says, then Jesus said to them, give back to Caesar what is Caesar's 
and to God what is God's. It makes sense. Because the Roman citizen was not required to pay taxes. It was only required for, in Roman law for the provinces outside of Rome to pay taxes. And in today's context, Jerusalem is required to pay taxes. Living in a Hellenistic time period, that was multicultural with many Jewish sects in communities. Jesus brings a perspective to us that as the church to reflect on today. That is required of the believer to abide by the laws and regulations of the land we live. In our Bible study, we have discussed that the Methodist church was not to revolutionize or protest against the Anglican church. It was to reform, not only in our churches, but in, it was to reform our nation and to uphold a progressive emphasis on Christian living. Through the lens of Jesus Christ, our debts must be paid to the governmental authorities or to those where debt is due. As Paul says in the book of Romans, pay to all what is due to them. Taxes to whom taxes are due, revenue to whom revenue is due, respect to whom respect is due, honor to whom honor is due. My church family, this is not a sermon about paying taxes or assuring that you pay your debts on a timely manner. We're all grown-ups here. We're all, we all know what to do. This is knowing the difference between paying to live on earth and paying to live in heaven. The requirements in living in, the, in this light that you and I are experiencing today. Debts or taxes are the components that pave the way recognizing the functionality of living in one's community. Now, I know when I say taxes, don't look at me like that. <laughs> don't, uh, it's, it's, it's like a, it's another, it's like a nice cuss word, taxes, <laughs> you know. But, but here, here it is. Earth inhabits many countries that have different lands, laws, and regulations. Jesus does not support anarchism, looting of stores, <clears throat> murdering of innocent people, corrupt politics, or in today's context, defunding the police. What we understand in today's scripture is Jesus recognizes the current authority of his time because he is not bewildered by the current context for he knows, he knows, and you and I know that there's a different authority that is more powerful and everlasting. The authority is pro prophesied by the prophet Isaiah saying, I am the first and I am the last. Besides me, there is no God. Do not fear or be afraid. Have I not told you from old and declared it? You are my witnesses. Is there any God besides me? There is no other. I know not one. Uh, I, know, I know growing up that um, I, I went to where my parents are from in Tonga. I, the taxes there are very different, so... Um, not everyone in, in, in Tonga has money, so you either can pay in food, that's a, that's a good one, or, or, or crops that you grow. Uh, I know that one of the, the things that we do in, in where my, my mother is from is the noble that, that has, that is of that whole soil, and my, my relatives live on that soil, what they do is give a portion a third of what they have grown that day. And it, it's, when it's given to the noble, the noble, he doesn't, doesn't accept all of it. He disperses it out throughout the village so that everyone can actually share what you have given them. So let's say your neighbor grows bananas and then your neighbor, other neighbor grows apples. So when it's time for taxes or if a big event happens in your village, um, in participation, you will probably have Apples and bananas because it's from your neighbors, because it's been dispersed amongst the whole community. Now back to the story is that everywhere you would touch your foot on has a tax. Beloved, Jesus was assuring that you do, not, you do not give what is God's to the leaders of the land. If we were to apply it to today's context, we are always trying to be on time with our bills, paying our debts. Yes, this is our life. But here is the difference. To give what is the emperor to what is the emperor's should not coexist 
with what is owed to God. The question is, what is owed to God? Do we know what is owed to the Most High? It is coherent to worship God and government at the same time. Jesus is assuring that we do not give our hearts, minds, and souls to the emperor. In Rome, the emperor would be considered a god. However, in today's gospel, through the apostle Matthew, Jesus is the highest emperor. Jesus is king. Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus, the prince of peace. Jesus, the great counselor. To give what is the emperor's to the emperor, God expects his form of payment also. That is not in a denarii or a denarius or a currency. It is not in gold. It is not in wealth. The payment is you. This payment is your faith in Jesus Christ as referenced by the Apostle Matthew. Then Jesus told his disciples, if any wish to come after me, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. And this leads me to my second part, the things that are God's. As you all know that today is Consecration Sunday. The word consecration is defined as the action to make holy or declaring something sacred. This can be referred in Exodus chapter 19, in which Israel was required to make themselves clean before they came to meet God around Mount Sinai. Consecration Sunday is a celebration that highlights those who are the builders of God's church, who are all of you, the builders of Carson Valley United Methodist Church. My church family, I would like to thank you personally from the bottom of my heart. May God bless you tenfold as you continue to build God's kingdom here in our community of Gardnerville and also in the valley. As he continues to bless you as we build this church in representation of Jesus Christ with open hearts, open minds, and open doors. Furthermore, we have learned that Jesus recognizes the emperor or the leaders of his context. Jesus does not deny that there's a government that still exists. Jesus does not deny that, that there is enforcement and law enforcement in his time. He recognizes them. But also, he also recognizes a higher authority than them, and it is God. So what do we give to God? Or what is expected from us to be given to God? If payment or coin is to be submitted to government, then something of higher value is to be submitted to God. It is you and I. God wants you and I. But in order for you and I to reach the kingdom of God, you see our hearts must be consecrated. By the blood of Christ. Your soul must be filled with the love of Jesus Christ. Jesus paid for our sins. You do not. He did it on the cross on Calvary. He was resurrected from the dead to conquer. He ascended into heaven to sit at the right hand of God. Jesus paid your way for the kingdom. Give what is the emperors to the emperors. Give it to them. The Apostle Paul says, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. We're not speaking about Abrahamic lineage here. We're not speaking about a specific church that can pave a way for you to the kingdom. We're not talking about wearing a specific garment or jewelry, or clothing that can give you keys to the access. We're not talking about a Melchizedek priesthood here. We're not talking about that the Methodist church can pave and, and build a bridge for you to walk from earth to heaven. We're not talking about your money. We're not talking about your wealth. We're not talking about popularity. Not your accomplishments. Not your Methodism. Not your politics. Not your ranking. God wants you. You are good enough for God. You belong to God. 
Let God be your guide. Always remember to set time for prayer, meditation, or devotion for God. Set a portion of your, or, or your earnings for him. For he did not just set you aside or ignore you or ignore the world, but he gave us his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. You are what belongs to God. What you do on a day-to-day -day basis matters to God. What is in your heart matters to God. What comes out of your mouth matters to God. Who you have faith in matters to God. How you treat your neighbors matters to God. Who you worship matters to God. Put God first. Pay with your faith in him. Your time, your response to grace, your performance of good deeds, and living a Christian disciplined life is all planted with your seed of faith in Jesus Christ. When you have Jesus, that is a law of love. You respond with love. You do not respond with hate or anarchism. Respond with love. The things that are God are not just things. They are you. God wants a relationship with you. Pay your taxes and your bills, but never, ever forget God. Always make time for God. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for the many blessings you have given us in our time of happiness. We also thank you for times of sadness and struggle. But we know this is not our home. You have prepared a place for us. We pray that we do not approach in a time of our lives that we give ourselves to the emperors or the authorities of this land, that we give ourselves to you. We belong to you, and you belong to us. Even though our lives are busy, unorganized, imperfect, unworthy, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice. And so instill your Holy Spirit in our walk with you, Lord, in this month's theme for the long haul. Keep us under your whim, Lord, because we belong to you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'd like to ask the church congregation to please stand, if you are able, as we sing our closing hymn, Take My Life and Let It Be.
right, don't go now. I got a bunch of reminders. <laughs> Flowers today are from Kathy in memory of Bob Wicker's birthday. Joining you, uh, United Women's in Faith, Heavenly Holiday Craft Team every Monday, 9.30 to noon. Completed crafts due October 30th. Okay, six-week Bible study. We are on our fifth week. We only have two more weeks. Chapter 8 is our chapter, continuing on our walk with the book of Exodus and donuts. Uh, we have youth group this Tuesday at, oh, no, no youth group this Tuesday. Um, okay, no youth group this, yes, Chunk or Treat the following week, okay. Uh, sign auction donations needed, experiences, timeshare tickets, items valued over $50. Speak with Nancy Dice or Sharon Holzer Day. Oh, this is the most important slide. I was told to say that, but, so. Baker's cinnamon roll and candy makers needed for Heavenly Holiday Fair due November uh, 4th. Uh, sign up in Fellowship Hall. If you know how to make some, we really do need some. Uh, we really need cinnamon rolls. <laughs> cinnamon, yes. We have a recipe, or you can use your own, but we need cinnamon rolls. Yes. And speaking of cinnamon rolls, I heard they make you give you a strong back. So strong backs needed for the craft fair table set up following second service, which is next Sunday. If you have a strong back, uh, I don't know about me, but uh, on all, we need your help for next Sunday. Thank you. Go ahead, trunk or treat. <laughs> Decorate it for fun, bring some candy, and join our youth group as they host Trunk or Treat in the church parking lot. Thank you, Laura. <laughs> yes. Oh. November 3rd is when baked goods and candy are, are due. So if you're, yeah, you're late, that's going to have to come to my house, so. Uh, Heavenly Holiday Fair, yes, it's on Saturday, November 4th, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. We have crafts, jewelry, candy land, raffle baskets, kids market, bake sales, silent auction, here at Carson Valley United Methodist Church. Tell your friends, tell your family. Uh, Veterans Day slideshow on November 12th. Uh, have a picture of yourself or family member. Submit it to Len. Uh, member care team Harvest Potluck is on Sunday, November 19th. It will be after the second service. Ham, turkey, rolls, and drinks provided. Sign-ups are in the fellowship hall. Oh, in the... Oh, okay. It's right in the entrance? Okay. Right, in, right when you enter, you'll see a big fellowship... A big sign up for the harvest potluck. Okay, um, go 49ers on Monday. So, <laughs> let me say benediction. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you forevermore, church. Amen. Amen. Okay.